All right, Mal, you're up next. What do you got? I have been playing a game myself recently. It is not a remake. It is, in fact, oh, no. a completely new game that is a sequel. Oh, no. <laughs> what? To uh, what is it? Obsidian's 2015 Pillars of Eternity. It is Pillars of Eternity 2. Gasp, I think a lot of people have been fire. waiting on this, too. Huh? Gasp. I have. I have certainly. Uh, it was Kickstarter. Not Kickstarter. It was figged. I don't know. Um, they had crowd a campaign. Funded. Yeah, crowdfunded on Fig, where it got four and a half million dollars. Oh, nearly. Hot damn. Four hundred percent funded. Um. Yeah, so it picks up a little. I mean, I guess uh, there would be some slight spoilers for the first game, but uh, it picks up. Or not what? Like what that. kind of game is There's it? Spoilers, off, maybe. Oh yeah, it's so it's a computer RPG, uh, isometric. Um, like a, like Baldur's Gate, basically. Um, done by Obsidian, the people who did uh, they've done Tyranny, which is another isometric game uh, recently. They also you know, they did Fallout New Vegas. Um, was it Kotor Two? And, uh-huh. Yeah, they've done a lot of RPGs. They got some experience under their belt. Oh yeah. Um, so this picks up the story picks up about. I think it was five years after the first one. The first one, you have, uh, um, you end up uh, the owner of a keep, and you retire to your keep with that has a giant um, statue buried in the ground or whatever um, around it, or it's around the statue. And the uh, statue wakes up with a god in it and blows your keep up and steps on you, and you die. <laughs> Game over. TPK, um, but the god the uh, the god of death or Baroth um, decides uh, they're not done with you, so they send you back to figure out what's going on because Eophis, the god of resurrection, basically is back and in that statue tromping across the world. Resurrection so, resurrected himself. Yeah, it's not the first time he's uh, died and come back. Uh, but uh, so you, uh, after you, you so you can uh, import a save, or uh, they've got create a. I think they're called legacies. You can create your legacy, which is like uh, you can go through a bunch of the choices that they care about and set what your character would have done. Or you can choose from like some pre-made basic ones, and uh, then you make your character, which can be completely different even after you import a save. Um, and then you get the uh, wake. You wake up on a ship um, in the Dead Fire Archipelago. 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 Yeah. Archipelago. Um, which is just a bunch of islands, uh, and so it's got a very piratey theme. And the first thing as you after you wake up is your uh this your set uh the pirates have uh trying to take your ship basically. Ha. Huh. Trying to yeah. pirate your car. My ship. Yeah. That would be my ship, sir. I will ask you kindly to get off. So it's got a very different feel from the first in that regards. Like the setting is very different. The very, the first one is like basic, like, you know, Euro fantasy setting or whatever. Um, this one is this game is kind of uh, like the East Indies Golden Age of piracy, with though the natives have more of a Polynesian feel to them. So, uh-huh. which is just not something you you don't get pirate fantasy very often. Um, True. Yeah, I can't think awesome. of how many. Yeah, pirates. You get to see Cast pirates Fireball. of the Caribbean. Is about as yeah. pirate fantasy as you get. Mainstream. Right, but you still got like uh, you know wizards and stuff in this. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's Ixel on the game <laughs> without so, the South American. Aspect. Oh yeah, no dinosaurs. Um, so the system is built on is takes a lot from D and D. It's very obviously inspired by D and D. Three, I guess. Well, yeah, early especially. So, what class are you playing, Mel? I went through as a they in, they uh so uh they introduced multiclassing in this one so I was a rogue um what is 
uh, wizard. <laughs> just a rogue wizard, which they call Spellblade is the combined name for that. Gotcha. I didn't end up loving the rogue stuff. It's, they're very obviously like just deal tons of damage. And they have some in, other interesting classes that aren't like uh, direct uh, comparisons to D&D, which I've already made another character who is a chanter, which I mean, you could say they're kind of like a bard, but they don't have like the spell casting of like a like how a bard has basically spell casting from a wizard or something it's a you you can you get to choose chants that you can end up building like uh as you like as you chant you get the effect it might be like you know reload quicker do some more damage or heal or something and you can build them up you can put a bunch of chants into one string so that you're always just chanting all the ones you have but it Eventually, they linger and fade off, so you only get so many at a time active at once. And then they have some, uh, and as you finish a, um, one of your chants, you get phrases, which are a resource you can spend to like cast spell-like abilities. Um, I think they're the only ones with summons, basically, too, so I like using them for summoning. Could have been a paladin pirate, Mal. You blew it. <laughs> I could have. I thought about it. Uh <laughs> I do like the Paladin class, except that they are very tied to their, um, I mean, because it's just what everyone does with Paladins. They're tied to their their beliefs and everything, so they get penalties if you don't play a certain way. Huh. Um, and the cool, the guys with the cool black fire are all about being cool. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Paladin class I wanted to be, because who doesn't love, uh, you know, wreathing your weapons in black flames, but they're all about being cruel and aggressive. Um, but yeah, there's like there's the six stats. There's um, though they don't they're not a direct comparison um, to D and D. You got skill points. Uh, yeah, so definitely takes a lot from D and D on the mechanics. So it shouldn't feel too terribly unfamiliar. Uh, it's not like hard to pick up um, mechanically. The uh, like the big story is obviously like tracking this, the god that you know killed you, <laughs> but uh, there's also a lot of political intrigue and whatnot going on in the Dead Fire. Um, kind of like that's kind of the almost the main focus. There are four main factions, and uh, you get caught up in a lot of their stuff. You've got the you've got two outside um companies almost or um there's one that's like they're almost uh they're basically just a trading company and uh then another is more militant and then you've got the pirates and then the local um populace who have a ruling queen and whatnot huh yeah and you end up having um i mean it's obsidian they love their factions like uh in fallout New Vegas it was kind of set up similarly where the factions are in, like in the end you ended up siding with a faction or yourself um, it, uh, it this one actually even though it's a newer game ends up running for me runs way better than the first game on my computer which is nice because my computer's getting old so that was a nice uh, surprise I guess The um, how, what factions have you taken up so far? Uh, I mean, I've I've worked with all of them at this point. Uh, oh. th they l like you don't like uh like yeah early on um you can kind of just you know feel them all out, and then eventually you yeah like later in the game you kind of get you have to at least choose like start making more harder decisions. Um. How much they're likes... very. Oh, go on. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say they're very. Uh, like they all have you know pro very pros and cons and very like they're all like <laughs> it's all shades of gray everywhere basically with them. Um, there's no blatant good guy. Um, in the in the uh, so I mean a lot of people love that especially these guy. days. What? They're at least a blatant bad guy, or just uh, good guys. So I mean, it, I guess we're it all depends. messing up. 
Yeah, it depends on what you qualify count as a bad guy. Like, uh, I mean, yeah, there's there's been a lot of discussions on the factions, which I mean is kind of a good thing. It's or to uh, they lead a lot of discussions. For me, I mean, it's very popular now to have uh, with dealings in shades of gray and stuff, but sometimes it just makes everyone look like an asshole. Because yeah. <laughs> um, they all ha- uh, they all sort of uh, either, if not condone, um, are uh, okay with um, s- they- slavery, basically, and uh, or like uh, the natives have an awful caste system. Um, yeah, the uh, the merchant the the um, merchant guild uh, is okay with the slavery going on, and use uh, they used they explicitly use slaves to build their trading ships in the first game, and that doesn't really show up in the second one, so I'm not sure if that was kind of being retconned out. And then the other one, uh, the other um, invading force almost uses doesn't quite um, use slaves, but they have a extreme. S- uh, indentured servants and then the pirates there's like there's sort of two factions in the pirates um going on and the old uh piracy uh captains and everything are fine with the slavers and stuff and so yeah uh that's just one aspect i guess of them uh like they're all kind of dealing with dirty stuff and like uh, from a big picture like all the factions kind of have their uh their you know kind of can seem sucky at times like and then there are individuals within those factions that are, you know, better or whatever. How much yeah. side questing did you do? A lot, yeah, I guess. Because that's like my big problem with, because if there's lots of side quests, I'm always like trying to do them all. That's one <laughs> reason I haven't picked up Witcher 3 yet. And mm. CRPGs always have that uh, kind of like it, problem for me. I feel like there's almost too to much to do. Like the the story is very like tight i think and sort of almost like it's not quite secondary because it is a driving uh factor of your character but like there's not like it's very i i I think that if you just did the main story stuff it would be very short and you might you probably wouldn't even be properly leveled i guess okay yeah like you are i think you are quite expected to um do get within all uh you know doing side quests and whatnot like you don't have to do everything there's a big map because you get your ship and you can sail around the world and it's all fogged over um at the start um so you can explore and like uh yeah there are unnamed islands you can find and name (laughs) um do you have pirate ship battles Yes, there is ship battles. It's a little wonky, I think. I don't know. They're fine. It's fine. It's it's like um, whenever you battle with a ship, it like just goes into like um, a drop down of the sh- your ship, and then like a drawn picture of the enemy ship, basically. And like you're just kind of taking turns doing your orders, like uh, you know, turning to port, or starboard, doing a jibe or jib. I don't know. Uh, to basically just do a quick turnaround and then you can like uh, speed up fire the cannons which take time to reload but it's all like it's turn-based combat whereas the normal game is all it's like uh, Baldur's Gate where you can pause but it's all active time battling gotcha um there's a uh oh and then uh you can also enable so it's got quite a bit of difficulty options like there's the story all the way to what is it called? Uh, Path of the Damned is the top difficulty. <laughs> and it's got normal and Iron Man mode, oh, where Iron Man is uh, if you you get the one save. And if you die, you're dead. Which people love those. Oh, yeah. Just like I know X, XCOM's got it. Um, yeah, people do like them. They also, interestingly, did an achievement system in game where they call it Bareth, Bareth Blessings. Um, which is the god of uh, the dead or whatever that brought you back to life. And as you do, as you unlock achievements, like do certain quest lines and uh, or just, you know, craft so many items, you'll get points of these blessings that you can spend at character creation when you start the game again. That gives you like more ex- starting gold, you know, start at a higher level, that sort of thing. Um, it, it, I think it definitely encourages people to uh 
you know, try it at harder difficulties. And then there's also uh, scaling. Uh, you can turn scaling on completely or only at, uh, you can only make it so that lower levels will scale to you. So if you have scaling on, like you don't really, you could just turn off the grind entirely, basically. Yeah. Huh. They give you a lot of options. That's good. Options are always a good thing. Yeah, yeah agreed. Um, and then all of the critical role cast voice, the um, practically all of, uh, just, I think all of your uh, companions, <laughs> I believe. Uh, well, not all of your companions, but most. Every what uh, class is Matt? Matt, uh, he is he's returning um, from the first game where he voiced two of your companions. Uh, he voices a wizard and a fighter. <laughs> Though with in this game, you can actually choose between um, three character options when you recruit someone. So the fighter. Uh, the guy, uh, Edder, in the first one, one of his characters he voiced, was a fighter. And in this one, when he joins, when you get him on your uh, team officially, uh, you get the option of fighter, rogue, or rogue fighter, or fighter rogue, or whatever, like the multi-class version. So that was kind of nice that they give you some customized customability uh, there. Because there are only, I think... Uh, is it six or seven main companions that actually like have companion quests? <laughs> and then there are sidekicks. There's like another four or five of them where they don't have they're they're toned down. Um, which I don't really care for them all that much, which is unfortunate. Um, in some regards, because like Sam Regal and Ashley Johnson's characters are sidekicks, but uh, oh, I gotcha. And then you can also create characters, like for your party. Um, you could just create your entire um, party if you wanted to. T all the people you take with you could just be hirelings, which you can completely customize yourself. And they included the because um, <laughs> they teamed with Vox or Critical Role because they all work for or, or worked on it with the voices. And then um, I think they all almost were all on the first game already. Um, you can create the Vox Machina characters. Which was kind of nice. It was a free little DLC. That's actually very nice. Yeah, you can use it for your uh, your main character or the hirelings. Um, I don't. I didn't use it because I wanted to have the actual companions, at least for this play, the, my first playthrough. Um, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, and then Matt also had because he's Matt the DM uh, is uh, did Gilmore for from uh, one of his NPCs, so very that he also had that. And between the two official NPCs, Gilmore, you can create. And I, if he still voices the sinister voice for the main character, you can have four Matt Mercers in your party. <laughs> Just need one more, and you can have your entire party be Matt Mercer. Because you can have a party of five. But yeah, I, I quite enjoy the setting. I like it a lot. Um, it was cool to see the pirates. Uh, like and whatnot, like it's pretty colorful, not like a ton of dark, dreary colors. Um, the dungeons are really nice. The overworld map is perhaps a little lacking, but like once you get in dungeons, they're they're um, it's it's really good. Good. Um, yeah, like uh, what's I guess the last computer RPG I played was Divinity Two. Um. Which is a bit different because that one is completely turn based, whereas this one is not. But um, I think Divinity Two ends up being mechanically a bit better of a game. But I like the like the world and story of this one more. I uh, I'll have to play it at some point. So yeah. Because I mean, it's it seems like it's the kind of game I'd like. So. Yeah, I mean, you don't even need to have played the first one because they, they like um. Yeah, I heard they fill you just completely in on it. Yeah, you get a quick uh, overview of the first game, and then like there are references. The and TLDR. Stuff, but... you... <laughs> you uh you track down a guy who is screwing with the reincarnation cycle of the first in the first one, and you want them to end him because you become a watcher, which is someone who can uh, watch spirits, kind of guide them. Um, but yeah. <laughs> 